Hello, it's Sunday, time for a video. I say that. Um, I've already done one video and I decided not to put it out. Not now anyway. I might put it out someday. It was a long winded rambling affair really um, for 40 odd minutes. Anyway, I'm going to show you that. We've got a sour ale there. I know it's not homebrew, is it? Um, I admit, I've had a couple. I had two pints actually in my long rambling affair that I did earlier. That I may post at some point, but whatever. But this is from Bay 52. Now, I got um, my friend Mike, who lives down the corner. Sent me a link the other day for Bay 52. For they were they're having a clear out, you know, very much like um, Harry Brew's doing uh, clear out of beers that for him he's clearing out because he wants the space. They're obviously clearing out because they're close to date. So it was 20 quid for 20 beers plus four pound postage. Um, had he not bought this offer, I probably would have gone with Harry's. Certainly, um, I don't think your wife will let me do it again. Uh, we never know. Anyway, this is my uh, sour. Let me read it. Sour ale, four point five percent from Moondog Craft Brewery. Now, the Sir Plum McCartney Plum Sour Ale. I've had this once before, and I thought it was all right. Um, this is an American brewery. No, it's not. It, Victoria. State Territory of Persia. Hey, Victoria. Sorry, product of Australia, not America. <clears throat> so it's an Australian beer. Plum sour. Oh, yes. A little tart. Oh, you little tart. <clears throat> uh, no, it's not. There's a little tartness in the initial. There's no puckering. There's no oh catching you there. It's cleans your palate and you taste plums. There you go. There's an Aussie plum. Tasting some Aussie plums. Ah, uh, very nice. One half percent. So yes. So I bought that, and I'm pretty much through most of it. There's a few left. Uh, there's some good ones in there, some average ones in there, um, and then there's there's one left that I probably won't drink till I'm pissed on Christmas because it's an eggnog thing. So yeah, no, I'm not a big fan of. I like an eggnog. I just don't like the idea of an eggnog beer. I might do when I'm pissed at Christmas. So yeah. So cheers, everybody. So I've done this conversation, I know, and as I said, I did 40 odd minutes of it and it was just waffling and waffling. So I thought I'd do it again, even though I've had two pints in the meantime. Um, right, so I apologise now if I do start to ramble, but it's going to be better than the previous ramble, surely. But though I may post that at one, a later date. <coughs> but I'll, I'll cover what I did pretty much, maybe a bit more succinctly. Um, I did a brew uh, Wednesday. It was it was the vacant gesture again, and I did um, it with Citra. So a little Citra, like I told you, I was going to do. I actually did it. Though I didn't do it on. I think I said I was going to do it on the Monday. Well, I finally got around to it on the Wednesday and did it. And I dropped on to a yeast cake. So I want to talk about yeast cake. That's the it was the main thing for today's conversation that I want to talk about beer about so what I did and what I always do with the yeast cake is so once I take the beer and I only do a yeast cake if I have not dry hopped a beer so I just done the American wheat beer with citra so I was going to then do a vacant gesture um, clone but using citra so I thought well hops are similar so I'm already on there as it stands 
So I move the beer into the keg. Um, so I transfer the beer into the keg, but I leave usually about that much, maybe about an inch of liquid on top of the yeast keg. Then it goes back into the fermentation fridge, which at this point had been at two degrees, because um, I've been cold crashing. I then take it up to four and a half ish. So, and me. So I hold the yeast cake at four degrees, four to five degrees, um, depending really. I, I set it at four, but I'm never sure how the record is because it's just an um, STC 1000 that I use with the little probe thing that I put onto the side of my fermentation bucket in the fridge. So, and that's held on with like a big sponge. Um, it probably goes a lot colder than that because I do get ice when I cold crash um, in my beer. So, it keeps it quite cold and I can leave it there until I need to brew the next beer. At which point when I go to brew the next beer and I need to put the beer into the fermenter, I pour off that extra inch of liquid and then put the next wort on top of it. And it works fine, it has done for quite a while. And how long? How long can you do that for? Well, I extended that the recently. The secret gesture, which I've got, oh, do you know what? I'll put this sour ale as nice as it is to one side. And get another glass. I'm gonna be pissed before these are uploaded, aren't I? Um, my secret gesture is the beer I did, um, it's the first beer I've done for a while. I know I've been out of the loop for two months, I'd like, before the last uh, last but one video um, previously. And I'd just done a secret gesture. Well, I've been out of the loop then for two months. And the last beer I'd done on that two months... I put the yeast cake aside. It's a, it was a Kolsch yeast. It was cross my leaf Kolsch yeast, which I'd done to do a secret gesture. I think, no, it can't have been a secret gesture. It must have been something else because I don't like to do it when uh, I use um, dry hopping. So this is that, the secret gesture. And it's very nice. It's pretty much the end of the keg now, and it's a little bit more bitter than the initial recipe, but that's because um, I used a little bit more challenger in the um, bittering at 60 minutes because I just had, I think it was two grams more, and I he was like, do I keep two grams? Why the fuck would you keep two grams of hops? It was like just a little tiny thing like that. I was like, oh, why? Just chuck it in. Uh, it's a bit more bitter. So be it. I'll live with it because it's it's not a bitter recipe normally. So I can live with it. So I did. And this is it. So that was brewed using a yeast cake that had been sat for two months in my fridge, in my fermentation fridge. Um. So, how do I do this? Uh, I'll go back again. Uh, rewind a second. And I have a bucket. So, it's just a fermentation bucket. I don't have a tap on it. I don't have um, an airlock on it. It's just literally a brewing bucket. So, it's sealable lid, white plastic bucket. So, when I seal it, it's pretty much airtight. You know this when you do the... Um, when I put star sand and hot water in to, and give it the shake, it just goes like that. Or, excuse me, when I first put yeast in and leave it and accidentally leave it closed, it starts to balloon. Yeah, so, I, or even the opposite way, when I cold crash, it starts to suck in and I have to open it. Um, so, yes, it's pretty clean here. And so I do this, uh, I leave the inch, 
keep it at four degrees, completely seal it and leave it. And I've done that up to two months now. Two months is the longest I've done it. And it's a perfectly good beer that it produced using that yeast cake. I wasn't sure it was going to work. I was expecting to have to chuck it, but no, it's, it's come good. Uh, I'm quite happy with that. So yes, that's the, what I really wanted to discuss about was the yeast game thing. So yeah, football. Hey, now I'm happy. Um, I'm sure Man United fans are happy. And what time is it? It's ten to four, and I have not seen the football at all today. And I can't look because I'm watching you on my phone there. And I don't have any other device in here. Uh, so I don't know really what's happened with the rest of the today. I think there's Spurs to play, isn't there? And obviously City. Is it Spurs v City? I can't remember. Uh, I don't know what the rest of the games are today, so I haven't seen those. Um, Arsenal. Yeah, let's say best men did, I think. There. Well done, Bradford. Bloody hell. Um, a Liverpool player as well. Ex-Liverpool player, should I say. Scoring, well done. Um, other than that, everyone seems to be running to how you would expect. Um, Chelsea battered Palace, didn't they? Yeah, how was that 3 0? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting season. There's some interesting players coming in. Uh, Man U splashed out, um, City have splashed out. Uh, we've spent a little bit, I think. Oh, we, we have. Uh, Canati, I think we got. That's pretty much about all we've spent. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to uh, this season. And it's really nice. I watched the Liverpool game and I'm really happy with it. Really happy with how we're having the team back. The, the, the spine of the team looking good. Um, especially, I, I mean... It was all right for the first half, but once we got Fabinho and Firmino on, that was better for me. I thought we seemed to have more a more solid centre um, and played a lot better and could have scored more, could have scored more, I think. Could have given away more, actually, in fairness. Certainly, yeah, Alisson saved us. And saved us and saved us at one point when there was like that goal scramble, but um, yeah, I'm happy with that. I'll take that. Everton won, beat Southampton, I think it was a 3 1, was it a 3 1? Uh, so Benitez, first game. Well done, Benitez. Doing well. You'll win them over. You will. Um, yeah, so it's nice to have fans back, isn't it? Other than the dickheads. And I'm looking at Liverpool fans here. And not every Liverpool fan, obviously, those that were giving the old racist blah. blah, blah. <sighs> Having a bit of banter is one thing. When you move away from banter and knowing, not knowing the difference between banter and just pure racism, it's just. Fuck off. Get out. You, 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 go do your little. Goose stepping somewhere else. Preferably behind prison walls. Other than that, yeah. Um, looking forward. It's going to be an exciting season. This I think I, I couldn't call it. I don't think I could call it. Um, United five one against Leeds. Leeds they've got that difficult second season. Haven't they? You know, like the difficult second album or. A strikers second season about everyone first season of like say I think I said this earlier um, um, like Salah in his first season at Liverpool everyone's like yeah yeah he's done brilliantly absolutely smashed records and that yeah but no one knows him he's left footed you see so everyone, no one really knew what, how to deal with him second season okay they didn't know how to deal with him then either third season it's not but yeah it's there's always that yeah, you did it one season, can you do it again? And Leeds, first year in the Premier League, can you do it again? Because you did fucking, they were amazing last season. For coming up, team coming up. Um, 
So, can they do it this season? And, or is it a kick? Is it a case of they're struggling to do it this season, or was it the Man U are worse? So, I didn't see the game, so I couldn't say one way or the other whether it was all about Leeds were just outplayed because Leeds were very good, or because uh, Man United were so bloody good. So, I look forward to finding out about that. Uh, still don't know about City, still don't know about Spurs, um, not that Spurs were much of a problem, sorry, sorry Matt, sorry Matty, if you're watching this, uh, yeah. um, Arsenal, fucking no way, yeah, this is just when are they going to get rid of him, because he's just killing them, he hasn't got the ability to deal with what Wenger had to deal with, I think, I mean, Wenger kept Arsenal fourth place for so many years. Yeah, I know they didn't get any further than fourth place. But when you're just having to buy a brand new stadium and you're having to pay for it, there's no fucking money man there just going, hey, 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 have some cash here, have some cash there. Actually, guy, no, you're going to have to pay for it out of the wages or the players, etc. It's going to have to come from the club, not me. Then you've got yeah, yeah. He did. I thought he did very well, and I think the fans are starting to realise that how well he was actually doing for what you have, money-wise. As fans, as a club, sorry. Um, anything else? I was getting a message up on my phone there saying. Uh, Afghan presidents fleeing Kabul. Well, shit's hitting the fan down there, isn't it? Down there, up there, around there. Okay. It's just there, isn't it? I mean, you're getting fucked over. Um, yeah. Won't go into that. That'll be here for all fucking day. What else should we talk about? I'm up to 17 minutes now, and I just want to talk about some brew tubers. Um,. I posted something, I think it was yesterday, or, oh it was Friday, I did my saying thank you to everyone, oh I wasn't saying thank you to anyone, I was saying to all those at LCBF, enjoy your fucking selves. Um, yes, LCBF, missed it this year and I'm really sad that I did, and I saw the pictures of the guys and I was really fucking jealous, really fucking jealous, so much so that I have to go next year, again. Um... I mean, I'm assuming, and that's a big assumption, I know, that things will be normal next year. Things are quite normal now, I know, in a way. Um, but, I mean, this is summer. Winter kind of throws curveballs, doesn't it? Um, with this thing. <coughs> Not sure where it's going to go. So anyway, I'd like to go back to LCBF because it looked like the guys have a really good time this year and I hate to miss out on having a good time god I was grumpy on Friday so grumpy <laughs> and knowing full well I wasn't there and they were and there was a few of us that weren't there I know um, and I hope we all are again and more because it would be great I think it would be great to get that back in it um, but also I, I can't remember what else I posted something I think I posted it. Uh, I, oh yes, and Rob Corbett commented. Now you might not, you may be on my channel, and you might not know who Rob Corbett is. Um, he's a brewer who turned professional and started. Uh, he's a Canadian for start. He's a big Canadian guy. He used to do a YouTube channel. I think it's Bootstrap Brewery. Um, uh, springs to mind. I think it's Bootstrap Brewery. I, I, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, Stat his own um, professional brewery with, but it was a small one, but he opened a bar. So it was like he bought, uh, made a bar, had a brewery at the thing, made his own beer to provide for his own brewery. Very much that, like how he did, but he did was doing this in Canada. Um, got established, did well, by the, from what I could see and what I saw. Um, from social media, and that obviously didn't go there because it's a long way to Canada just for a beer. Even I can't get away with that. I can't get to the LCBF. 
um, and then sold it. I think. I think that's what happened. I think he then sold it. I don't know whether it was because he wanted to move on to something else or what. I don't know. He, he then sold it. I think. Don't call me on that. But I don't think he. I don't know whether he sold the bar and kept doing the beer or what. I, he, he just changed hands. I know that, and I didn't really understand on social media what was going on. Um, anyway, I got me thinking of, of brewers, and because he, he commented, and he's a nice guy, and uh, he's back, obviously, in the brewing thing, having a little dip with his toe, because he commented on uh, a post I did, and it was nice to have it happen. And so I look back, and Sam Larkman, uh, another Canadian, uh, he used to come on the, now I can't remember what you call them, they're not Zoom calls anymore. Well, it was Zoom call. It is Zoom calls now, but it wasn't Zoom back then when we were doing it, uh, or before. Because Sam used to do with Harry and Tom and um, all all those brewers, um, and then he got in. There was like it. They stopped kind of doing that as publicly. Um, when I started brewing, I, I was watching them and. Like, like, oh, I don't want to step in there, I'm not a brewer, uh, kind of thing, and not, not up there. Um, then I started my channel and started getting to know people, and at the same time, others were doing the same things. Uh, so the likes of Rusty, Hapless, Red Dog, Dudes Brews, um, many more, many, many more. They're, they're just the first ones that come off the top of my head, so I, I don't think I missed you. Uh, Big Banana, yeah, Big Banana. <sighs> Um, blah blah, thinking now, uh, yeah, Adam at Baldy's, um, things like that. These people were they, they all started doing their channels as well, at the same time as myself, and that. And then we started doing our uh meetups on video conferencing. I can't remember what it was, uh, what it was called, uh, anyway. So, and, and Sam would drop in, uh, as others would, it, as the nights got later, so they. It, worked out for them and they would drop in uh, and Sam would at times uh, and others um, so it was incredible to meet him he hasn't posted for like three years as far as I could see I really looked the other day and he hadn't posted for like three years uh, I mean there's like a new generation now I mean we all of us have like done all that and met up and done the LCBF and know each other uh, and now all in contact kind of thing uh, and then there's a new breeder doing it um, like Mick Shaw, uh, Matthew Lonsdale, um, Jack, um, Joe, is it Joe Johnson, Jack Johnson, uh, I can't remember, um, then there's uh, the likes of oh, Andrew Lynch etc, they're all doing the next level of it and it's, it's good to see it comes in like a wave like new groups come together and then they coalesce and then that's the next one and then the next one comes and i mean and then we move some of us like um just sort of like fizzle back away um don't do videos as much and such um and then there's the those that are still constantly doing videos but don't get involved so much in the, the social side, um, like Tony, um, Tony Bramman, and Steve Molson, um, oh, Sarah, Sarah, I mean, Sarah does, Sarah's like over there, she, she's a different level, I have to be honest, I have to say Sarah's at a different level, um, to us to mortals, um, I, I mean, I'm forgetting names and stuff, and Matt Warburton, there's another one, He he's there with the Steve Molson's actors, I mean, he I met him at the um, very first LCBF, lovely guy, um, I had some nice chat with him, we talked beer and stuff, um, but he's doing his own thing, everyone's just, uh, there's, there's like, yeah, uh, yeah. It's just interesting how it comes away in like waves of groups, like people who are meeting up and uh, then it changes. Tom Donnelly, there's one of the new crowd, if you know what I mean. I don't mean like a new crowd, like um, it's like a new wave of people. Uh, yeah, it's interesting, it's good. 
I like it. Uh, Cheshire Homebrew was of that previous generation that I watched. You know what I mean? <laughs> when I say generation, it's not like we're we're like kids when we're watching. We're just brewing. So it's like maybe, oh, these are all doing videos. They've done like a year or two and you're watching them. And then you start brewing and then you do videos and you maybe do a year or two. And then someone else starts has watched, start, watched you uh, and such. And then they do a year or two. That's, it's a very short generations, but generations nonetheless, in that at the time, those that are coming together are coming together at that time. Yeah, I think. It's quite complicated, that, isn't it? I think. Feels it. So, the secret gesture is pretty much finished. You can tell it's pretty clear. As clear as uh, my beers tend to get these days. I uh, don't really do much in the way of finings. Um, icing glass. I'm not sure I can cope with it. Um, don't think it, I, there's one that just really just goes poof on my stomach. I just go blow up, and then if I have another drink after that, I throw up because it, it's I'm just like really. <laughs> It's like a fucking buffer fish, I go. Um, I think it's icing glass. I really have to watch what beer I drink these days because of it. Um, yeah. Gelatin, I've not tried. I've not tried actually finding my own beers with gelatin just to see if that's it. I mean, I can't think it is because I still eat things like jelly beans, um, fruit pastels and things. Uh, they've got gelatin, haven't they? Um, I still like chewing a cow's leg here and there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I have to say though, but the the Bay fifty two thing was very good. Um we're at twenty seven minutes. If you're thinking about getting you know, some beers, some, some buying beers, uh the Harrison Brewery one I, I would definitely go for. If he he's selling I mean there's some neepers in there. I mean these I knew Bay 52, I knew these were going to be um, close to date. I was hoping to get a lot more, a lot less um, IPAs, Nipahs, that kind of thing, and more bitters and sort of things, because they, they do better. So I was quite impressed that I got a lot of, I got through some brown ales, some stouts, some milks, quite a few milk stouts, some sours, quite a few sours. I mean... That, that's brilliant. There was a few IPAs in there and pale ales, and they weren't that bad. I wasn't like ooh, a little bit fucking rancid. Uh, I don't know how to keep them at Bay 52. I don't know whether they're stored properly, like cold and such. But yeah, I was uh, the, it was all right. But I know for a fact, you know, he said, well, I don't know for a fact because I've not seen, but I know, I believe what he says because quite a few people. Myself included, have been there and seen the things that he said and shows all day. I mean, he shows everything, doesn't he? So it's not like he can lie and get away with it, kind of thing. So if you do fancy getting it, he, he keeps his stuff in cold storage, and this is why he needs to get it out of cold storage because he wants to brew the Christmas selection beers. So things like Nipahs and that, they've been kept chilled, which is good. Good for you, good for him. Um, good for all of us. So if you fancy, I'd say get it. I, I wouldn't say think about it a second time. I would, I'd just like, yeah, I'd do it. It's just the fact that I bought this Bay, Bay 52 one only the week before that stops me. Well, that's the way that stops me, but it's because I bought the Bay 52. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're at 30 minutes. I waffle for long enough. And so I will say thanks for watching. If you're still watched to, to this point, then wow, your life must be as sad as mine. <laughs> Catch you in the next one. Cheers.